Okay. Welcome, Star Wars fans, and especially Boba Fett fans, or Mandalorian fans, more specifically. Um, I just got my, what they're calling, I guess, an elite Boba Fett helmet. So it's the Black Series Boba Fett prototype armor is what they're calling this. Anyway, it's an all-white helmet. Um, I remember years ago when I was a kid, or I think maybe when the prequels first came out, they had talked about having all the stormtroopers in basically white Boba Fett armor and that the backstory was Boba Fett had appropriated or gotten a old stormtrooper suit and painted it up the way he liked it, which was what he wore, the green with the, the red and the yellow. But anyway, they changed that storyline, did the whole Jango Fett with the chrome helmet. Boba Fett inherited his dad's stuff and painted it up, green, red, yellow, whatever. So anyway, they decided to put this Black Series helmet out. I believe it's Hasbro, but I'm not sure. Somewhere on the box probably says who it's made by Hasbro. So anyway, I had seen some postings on this and people were basically bashing it, saying, oh yeah, it's just a recast Boba Fett helmet, blah, blah, blah. It's got the, it's got the, um, the imperfections in the bot in the paint, like they just painted over and over. Well, that's exactly what they did, is they used a cast from the Boba Fett helmet that they also came out with recently, and they cast it in white ABS. I'm assuming this is ABS. Could be PVC, I'm not sure, but it's hard plastic. I've already disassembled mine because I've always wanted a Boba Fett helmet, but not in Boba Fett color. And I never liked the idea of the dent in the top of the crown. I've got all the parts in here, but on this crown has no dent. They basically redid the crown without a dent. Um, so this basically is identical in every way, other than the fact that they didn't paint it but it's cast from the same molds. And one thing that's kind of funny is inside this, the crown, there's the dent right here. So they actually left the dent in this inside part. I don't know why, because the outside part is perfect. And it's not filled, this is actually cast this way. So anyway, my plan from the very start, and I just got this about 20 minutes ago, um, my plan has always been to paint it. And I know everybody's going crazy for the Mandalorian right now, and I, I like the Mandalorian paints or the, the Vesper metal look, but I don't want to be, I don't want this to look exactly like the Mandalorian series so I'm gonna probably paint it something along those lines of silver or charcoal gray or something like that um, this part of the video is I just wanted to show that I broke this down in probably about 10 minutes it's held together with clips there's little popping clips like this one here with my fingers at and it mates to a clip so there's a female on this side, male on this side, and it's opposite. Be very careful if you ever do this, it's very flimsy because it's not assembled with the visor. When the visor is in, which is, when this is in, and this inside part here, which is actually screwed in with screws, it becomes rigid. So I gotta be real careful about that. But, they basically, like I said, they cast this right off of a Boba Fett helmet, except for the crown or the top, however you want to call it. Um, other than that, the pictures and videos I've seen of the Boba Fett helmet, they look just like this. On the inside, it's got this, this is this rubber, it's not filled, 
but it's made to look like a little foam rubber. When you put this thing on, your head doesn't even touch that. I got a, I got a, I guess a large head. This thing doesn't work for shit. Um, pardon my French. So what I may end up doing is take this out and put in foam if I want to wear it. I want to make this more along the lines of just something I can put on a shelf. But what I'm going to do, and it'll be momentarily because I'll do updates as I do this project. Um, I'm going to body fill this. I'm going to actually plastic fill this. These little, these little imperfections. I don't know if you can see those on camera. I'm trying to make it where you can see them. Anyway, you get the idea. There's little blemishes that, which believe it or not, I mean those are in the in the Boba Fett cast, and they make that helmet look extremely movie-like. Because wherever there's a blem like that, a little divot, it's silver. So they made it look like the paint got chipped off. It's really cool very cool effect but I don't want all that um what I want to do is I'm going to make a I want to make a helmet that looks brand new and never been touched or at least that's what I'm thinking um I may do some some like uh the paint's worn off a little bit but it hasn't divoted the metal they've got divots I mean they even have they even have uh, divots right in here on my thumbs at I don't know if you can see that um, so it's very detailed. I'd actually like to see one of the other ones up close, but like I said, I've always wanted a Boba Fett helmet, minus the dents and dings, and I want to be able to make it exactly the way I want it. I'm going to colorize it the way I want it. Um, these are some of the components. This actually comes, when it's shipped, it comes without this attached. This is a little, little scope, and these lights flash. Um, but it came fully assembled and I just took it all apart. It's all held together with very small screws. Um, there's, looks like there's some glue maybe in the crown here, but I'm not going to take this out. I'm going to sand, prime, and paint the top. I'll just do that. Um, and then I'm going to body fill, or plastic fill, all the little divots. I'm going to make this look nice and pretty and new and then I'm going to paint it and that will be up probably later on down the line um, I'll probably take some video after each body fill but today's video is just to start I just got this like I said just pulled it apart it didn't take that long you, if you do plan on doing this um, maybe, you know, pulling it apart like this it takes an extremely small screwdriver I didn't use a watchmaker screwdriver um, um, but I think if a very small Phillips screwdriver would work as long as the tip's small enough. But other than that, everything else is either clipped or screwed. And that's pretty much it for this video. And the next video will probably be some... Hey, this is a real quick video. I just went ahead and picked up the paint. Um, what I'm going to probably end up doing is I'm going to paint the little scope guy it's silver and black right now i am more than likely going to oops i'm going to more than likely go ahead i'm going to paint this all flat black except for this part here which is going to be the same color as the helmet depending on how i decide to accent it um obviously i got primer I went ahead and got the Dupa color, which is the, that's made for um, automotive. I wanted it to have an automotive look to it. So I got my flat black for any small spots. I'm thinking I may do the area right here in flat black, but I may go with the darker of the two grays. I end up getting charcoal which they're calling dark shadow gray I may use that in this area and the, the whole helmet I think I'm going to do in what they're calling medium charcoal metallic that's what I'm going to do I think to get the uh, 
the best way to look to it. So um, I'm also going to, on the inside of the helmet when it's put together, there is a black screen. So when you look through here, and ignore the background mess that's in my garage, it's a, in a constant state of stuff being dropped off. But anyway, um, if you look, you can see through this. And when the helmet is put together, there's like a black mesh. It almost looks like they could have put a voice box in or a voice changer, but it's just black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this reflectorized red to get a little red effect in the in through here. And I'm also thinking about possibly this groove that's right here. This is the inside. I'm thinking about either I'm going to cut this and put the, the red reflectorized tape on the inside so it just gives it a little, a little red accent and um, I may do something on here, I'm not sure though. Um, the reason I'm even thinking about this is because on um, Star Wars The Old Republic, the helmet that they have on there, they're, I think they're calling it the Ruthless Bounty Hunter set or something like that. Um, I'll fix that later. Anyway, um, I might even pop up some some uh, screenshots of what they got going on in the game. It's kind of what I'm going for with the color scheme, or I don't know. But anyway, in, in the game they've got they've got red lights back in here, and they've got a red or a green they've got a green light on the side, which would be this piece. They got like a green little square light. And then on the this side, it has the, almost an identical um, scope setup, but it, I think it has a green light right here. So I was gonna do that, but I don't wanna do a lot of cutting and I don't wanna run more electronics. I mean, later on down the line, I might. Um, I have a tendency to start a project, look at it when I'm done and saying, yeah, I could do, I could add something or I can do something. So anyway, this is my, my little um, makeshift workstation. I'm going to be doing this. Um, I've got the, the fair for all the dents. I'm not sure if you can see them now with, with the overhead lighting I got going on, but that's all going to be filled in. Um, there's, they only have the the blems or whatever you want to call that, the denting. I think you can see it there. Right where my thumb's at, it's all over the place actually. They just got that weathered look to it, I'm gonna fill in. And they only have it on the, the front and the back. The dome has none of that, which I think is kind of funny that I think that the Weather Fit version probably has a bunch of nicks and dings. So the dome is perfect. So I'm just gonna do a a nice um, smooth sand on this, tape off the little red and uh, green there, which I don't know if that's a, no a nod to, the, to uh, the nautical, why they did that. That's on the Boba Fett helmet also, but the whole, um, you know, you pass on the, you pass on the left actually in nautical, so, but um, I don't know what that is, why they have a green red. They've always had it on the Boba Fett helmet, they've got it on this helmet. So I'm gonna tape that off, and so the next video will probably be after I've done some filling, which I'm going to try to do today. Um, I'll do a video of the actual after it's filled without sanding. Then I'll sand it, do another video maybe. And you can see it, they, they just got that. I mean, it's hard to see it on the camera. And yeah, you can see all that divoting that's supposed to make it look worn and beat up. And I don't know if it's supposed to be chip paint or what. So anyway, um, so that's the next step is, I'll do a quick video on the, the film I've done. I'll sand it, then I'll do it. All right, it's video. been about an hour maybe since my last video. Um, I went ahead and added the grazing spot buddy, made by Bondo does not need a, uh, as far as I know, it does not need a second 
um, chemical to apple, you know, to apply it. Um, I know there's probably a lot of body guys out there that might see this and say, well, you did a really sloppy job, but I'm not a body guy. I was a mechanic for over 20 years. Um, I'm going to be sanding this anyway. But basically every area that's red had those little divots. And I'm going to let this dry overnight and I'll sand it tomorrow. This little side piece also had a bunch of, you can even see where it filled in. Right there, it filled in the, the little divots that were in there. I'm going to sand this down nice and pretty. Um, wet sand it. Make it perfect. I'll prime it up. Um, something I didn't mention on, I'll probably do a, a surprise reveal is the accent color I chose. You may have seen it in the last uh, little segment I did when I was scanning past all the uh, paints. But um, if you didn't, you'll see it when I'm all done. So the next section, when I come back, will be more than likely sanded and ready for primer. Then I'll prime it video, uh, basically a done primer video, and then we'll go from there. The okay, next step completed, which was my first wet sand. All of those, the, the majority of this red, I mean, there's still like, um, some spots I gotta get that I actually uh, wasn't a, a dent, but a lot of this is, I know this right here, this, this large spot where my thumb is, was definitely um, divots that were put into the casting to make it look like it was damaged. Um, the front wasn't as bad, but right up there at the top, dead center, that was definitely some divots. Um, I know there was a couple in there, but I'm gonna go back over, this is the first, just the first pass of wet sanding that I just did. Um, this one right here, this piece here was, was uh, this is the left um, side, and all that red were definitely low spots in the plastic that was cast in to make it look like it was uh, dented. So, um, I still have to, I'm going to do another pass of wet sand paper, um, probably 2500 for those of you that know what that is, the higher the number, the, the lower the grit. Um, anyway, this, this pass here was 800, which is the, the grittiest that I bought. Um, so we're gonna, probably I'm gonna probably throw a set of, uh, a um, coat of primer on it. Then I'm gonna go back over it with some real fine wet paper and uh, make sure it's perfect and then I'll end up painting after that. But it, that's this step. This is going to be charcoal inside here. Um, then the accent color, which I have not divulged in words, is going to be the T. And I may end up going all the way down to here and around the back with the accent color. This, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do this little arch on each cheek in charcoal. So this will be silver, this will be charcoal, and the rest will be all the accent color on the front, and the rest is all gonna be this color here. So we shall see, and um, probably in the next section of video, I will have already painted pretty much everything minus the charcoal gray. Um, I may do a video of that, otherwise I may do a video when I'm all done and this thing is assembled and we'll go from there. See how those two pieces are glowing nice and red? That's on purpose. What I ended up doing is this is gonna go inside the helmet 
goes on the back side and the louvers on the back of the helmet. This will shine through. This is reflectorized tape. This piece here is the inside. And what I ended up doing, I'll, I'll show it in just a second. Um, I ended up cutting grooves that will shine through also. And I'm debating on whether I'm gonna go ahead and put this reflector tape on the front two little triangles. I have them taped off right now. They're green and red by default. But I was thinking that'd be kind of cool to have this reflectorized tape. That's just from the candlelight. Those things are lighting up, which is kind of cool. Okay, here's the reveal. All right, so let's go ahead and go over what I did. Obviously, you can see that I went with a blue on the front. Let me zoom out a little bit. A um, couple of items that I added, just as my personal touch, is the I changed the triangles from red and green to the reflectorized red. And then, as we go around, I can rotate this. I also added the reflectorized tape on the button that lowers the targeting reticle. Just to add a little bit of additional color. Let's see, what else did I do? On the back of the helmet, inside, I had already showed this earlier, but I put the reflectorized tape and it came out really well. I'm really happy with that. And then the last custom touch is I notched out I ended up cutting three little louvers, little, uh, slits, in the side ear cover here, and then I put reflectorized tape on the inside of that. So other than that, it came out really good. I'm happy with it, and that's what counts. Um, it's not perfect. It's not as perfect as I would do it if I was doing this for, let's say, a person that was paying me. I would... Um, we put a little bit more time in it. Um, I spent about, I'm guessing about uh, 12 hours. Another thing I, I changed is when you get these, this is silver and this is flat black. I painted this all flat black. Um, the low lights, I guess I'll call them the low lights is I put, the, the helmet is done in the, uh, the medium silver. I'll list all the paints that I used in my description. I got them at AutoZone. I think you could probably get them just about anywhere that sells automotive type paint. Um, these were automotive paints, not not regular uh, spray paint, but they were sprout can. Um, this is done in the charcoal, the cheeks. I call them the cheeks or the cheekbone or whatever you want to call it. Um, I also did low lights down here. This is also done in the in the charcoal gray. And then down here and right here is all charcoal gray. The rest is all done in the, the medium silver, the medium gray. And then the blue, I taped off and did the around the, the lens and then I wrapped it around the back of the helmet. So just gives it a little bit of color. I didn't want to go crazy with it. But um, like I said, I'm very happy with it. Um, I know that earlier on in the in the uh, video, I mentioned that the metal for the Mandalorian helmet was Vespar. I know that's not right. So I guess it's Beskar. I think they're both. I'm not a meteorologist or a metallurgist, but um, I don't think they're either one of them is a real metal. I mean, it's just like unobtainium. Um, I did the body filling of all the little blends that were in here. They came out pretty good. There's a couple areas that are not perfect. Like I said, if I was doing this for, a, like if I was a body guy, which I'm not a body guy, I mentioned that earlier. Um, I'm an old mechanic and I just have dabbled in painting and body shop stuff. I've never had the patience for it.
Um, I've never been a patient kind of guy. I don't have the patience to stop, wait, and let paints and bondos and stuff like that cure. Um, that's why I would never be a good body guy. And I don't want to be a body guy. So anyway, um, so this is as good as I'm going to probably ever get it. I'm not going to go crazy. I could probably re-sand and do a lot of you know wet sanding and make it perfectly smooth and make everything perfect, perfect. But it's not that important to me. Um, I just didn't want a white helmet and I didn't want a Boba Fett helmet. I definitely didn't want the dent that the Boba Fett helmet had in it. If, if they never came up with this, I had always considered just getting a Boba Fett helmet and I would have filled that and repainted it. Um, just as a side note, the, the reflectors I added are kind of based on the Star Wars The Old Republic game. They just added a, uh, an in-game set. Kind of looks like that. It's got lights in the back here. It's got a green light, I think, on the on each side. There's one here, I think, when you when you go into to, um, attack mode, I guess you call it. This comes down automatically. This little light turns on, and then there's a green light. This is a little bit different. It's more Mandalorian helmet. This is a Boba Fett helmet. So anyway, I'm happy. And uh, like I said, I'll list the paint, the different paints with the part numbers um, in my description. And if you have any comments, feel free.